Hello everybody, welcome back. We're going to do a couple of things different in this video today. First thing, we're going to rechristen re this, the Center for Off-Road Research, Shenanigans, and Science. Because when you use the word science, it adds an undeniable credibility to whatever crap is said in subsequent statements. As always, everything in my video is stuff I make up. It's all opinion, so sue me, whatever. Or don't it's all opinion you can't sue somebody for opinion but here here we go every video i make is opinion second one we're going to talk about today is uh the fact that i've sort of planned out what i'm going to speak about in this uh, video as this is different from normal when i just ramble on about whatever crap is in front of me and third thing we're going to look at overdrive gears and I have overdriven the front axle on this by 14% with a popular manufacturer, which I like a lot. And these gears do work, and I'm going to show you uh, how they work and what the benefit is. There's going to be science everywhere in this video today, so I thought we'd get out the, the uh, calipers and just find out the size difference of the stock gear, which is this one. And I'm getting 12.6 millimeters. That's how exact we are here at the Center for Off-Road Research, Shenanigans, and Science. This one is 12.5. So there's a minor difference in, well, let me line the gears up, 12.4. And this one was 12.6. So there's only a 0.2 millimeter difference in the size of the um, spur gear for the diff. Now this is a worm gear and I don't know if some of you have heard of worm gear but you don't know what it means but uh, all it means is it rotate as it rotates it uh, just causes that uh, gear mesh to pull the gear forward as it slides through there. I need to cut my nails sorry about that but we're doing science, so I'm not going to worry about it for the moment. And uh, one thing you'll also notice is if you have a bigger gear here, it's very likely that the worm gear is going to be a little bit smaller because they have to occupy the same space once installed. And that is right at 7.7 .7 millimeters for the stock system. And the, ooh, that's a lot bigger. The worm gear for the overdrive is uh, 8.4. So that's a significantly larger um, diameter gear. And I've got the uh, bearing still in it. From I'm gonna pull the uh, trio overdrive gears out because I'm running a stock motor and I'll tell you why I don't want them with the stock motor in a little bit. But um, one thing you'll notice when you assemble this, there are, it comes with four O-rings. You will only need uh, one for each of these. So you'll put one here, and I've got a black one there on this side. You can't hardly see it, but it's a little black O-ring. And that is to space this out once it's inside of the um, differential. And in order to, I don't want to lose anything here. In order to do that, you'll just basically have to pull the axles out because they push into this. Uh, center gear once they're installed so without trying to mix these things up any further I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it and uh, I've already shot the scenes that show with the overdrive gears and I'm going to shoot the scenes that have it without the overdrive gears next and it'll all be merged together in uh, the video since this is the science episode, I'm going to show you what overdrive gears actually do. Using science, I have transported you five minutes and 47 seconds into the future from the last shot. And I'm also employing levitation to show you um, what stock gears do and what the uh, overdrive gears do. First, we'll start with stock and you'll notice that they both rotate together and they will continue to rotate together provided that the batteries and electronic components and mechanical components in this vehicle do not burn out 
and they will continue to do that for the next four to eight billion years depending on when science says the sun will burn out and uh, if you think about it they're only off by four so uh, somewhere in that range of four the sun will burn out and these would continue to rotate together the overdrive gears however are a different story they do not rotate together in fact the front tires rotate 13 and a half percent faster than the rears they will sync up they will go out of sync and then eventually you'll see here they will come back into sync where the front tire will again pass it and spin faster for this next bit of science we're going to show you the starting place where the rear axle is right over the line where the tile meets the carpet and show you the turning radius with overdrive gears. So I'm going to start with the wheels fully cranked and we will measure the distance it takes for the car to make a 180 degree turn and it's right there. Alright, I put the axles right back on the carpet line where they um, originally started. 180 degree turn and I am going to mark that place with some blue painters tape. This is the only tape a true scientist would use when performing this experiment. All right, there it is. All right, this is the run with stock differential gears. I'll start it just like before, and let's see how much radius it takes to do a 180 turn to put the rear axle back on the scene. Not much more. There's not much difference. I'd say it's a half inch. So, anecdotally, maybe. But on a surface like uh, tile or rock, you're not going to notice a whole lot of difference in turn radius. On carpet, you might. Let's run it the other way. Well, it's too late. I've already changed the gears, so um, it's not going to matter. But on a surface that's not super high traction, you're not going to have that much more turn radius. Just found that out. Didn't expect that, but there you go. We'll do a downhill test with the overdrive gears and one of the things I've noticed right away when I do this is it has a more drag brake effect than stock gears. It was still able to roll down um, on its own there because I have very uh, free diffs and it works pretty good for downhilling. Uh, you get, I noticed a little more drag brake effect and um, I think that's pretty beneficial for the type of driving that I do. Um, I've got a special uh, oil that I use in my diffs and it makes them super free. So any bit of drag brake extra that I can come up with is good. Um, but that's downhilling with the overdrive gears. This is a down sloping test stock gears. and. Now with the stock gears, the front and rear axles are turning in unison and there will be slightly less drag on the uh, drivetrain. I'm just going to let it creep down. I was hoping I'd show it rolling. A lot of times I get it to roll when it uh, is pointed down that way. I know a worm gear is not supposed to do that, but this one frequently does. So there's not a lot of difference in downsloping as well. You have a little bit more drag with the uh, overdrive gears, but not much. This is probably the most difficult line on my course. Not every car can do it. Um, it's meant to be hard and uh, the trail front uh, gears work great because the front of the car wants to pull itself a little bit faster than the rear. And that's very beneficial on steep angles and places where wheel speed is desirable. 
about to tip over there. There we go. But that worked out really well. Um, made it look easy. Um, normally, uh, my other cars have more of a tendency to want to flip themselves over backwards. But with the, the front pulling a little faster than the rear, it helps remove a little bit of that backflip tendency. Next we'll look at the uh, steep climb on Slippery Rock with stock gears. The tires are, are uh, moving together now. And you saw there it already wants to lift the nose. So there is some benefit, I think a lot of benefit actually, in um, having a faster front axle than rear axle. That's twice now it's wanted to raise the nose on me when it didn't do that before. Uh, one of the reasons is if your front axle is moving faster than your rear axle, um, as it progresses forward, the front axle is going to try to pull itself over things um, on its own rather than wait for the entire car to push it over. So now the whole thing is moving together and I'm noticing it is a bit more challenging this time. But like I said before, this is my most challenging direction. And uh, I don't expect to make it every time I try this route. So on steep climbs, it, it does have a lot of value, um, especially when the traction is low or the terrain is rough. The ability of that front axle to pull itself and uh, not rely on the whole car to move. I mean, obviously, it's all going to move together, but that front axle pulling is a very beneficial thing when it comes to a climb like this. Just for the sake of the video, um, if I don't make it on this attempt, I'm just going to move on to the, the uh, flat ground driving. So there is some benefit. We've, we've determined that during climbs it does work as advertised. It's a fantastic thing for, for climbing. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is a little bit of uh, just driving so we can hear what the gears sound like with that 14% overdrive on the front axle. And I'm just gonna chase it around the room once and uh, drive it at different speeds just to show you what it sounds like. A little bit of gear wine, not bad. About half throttle. And that's kind of the sound it makes. I'll do a little monster truck in here. But you get the idea. In the final shot, I'm just going to show the stock gear run and we're just going to listen to it, see if it sounds any different than with the uh, overdrive gears. Partial throttle. Had to move some things around, so it's going to run them over. And do a full speed. I think the, the uh, what 
without the overdrive, it just sounds a bit more free. Notice when I when I cut the the uh, wheel, it'll add some tension to the drive line. Here off the pitch change. I just feel like with the uh, overdrive gears, you hear that binding sound a bit more. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, motors. And for the last bit of science in this video, and I call it science because it's written on a piece of paper. So, therefore, it is gospel truth. Anyway, if you see it on paper, you know it's true. But what I've, what I've come up with are three categories of motors. Tier 1, 2, and 3. These are my categories. But category 1 are stock motors and the barrage motor. And they don't have the uh, tolerance for heat that the uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 motors have. Tier 2, to me, is a brushed motor that's big, like a PN70, PN90, and you gotta have a special mount to put those in. I love the PN uh, racing aluminum mount, and this PN90 is currently in my long wheelbase car, and I really like it, it's got a ton of torque. Nothing, of course, beats the torque of the motors that I call tier three. I put that right on there just because it looked cool. Anyway, um, you're not gonna hurt these. And um, gear them up as high as you want, do all kinds of weird gearing on your axles. It's not going to matter one bit. You're not going to overheat that. Because it has way more torque available than these cars will ever use. But uh, for what I'm doing, and I'm not saying you should do what I do. I mean, I drink milk after the expiration date. So, uh, you know, I can do that. Maybe you shouldn't. But anyway, um, I'm only going to use the overdrive gears with the Tier 2 or Tier 3 motor. Just because of their tolerance for heat. And um, that's all I got for today on the trio gears. I know there's been a lot of videos on them, but I hope I've showed you a few things that uh, maybe weren't universally known. Like I thought for sure that the um, overdrive gears would pull that front end around a lot tighter. And turns out on a non um, high friction surface like carpet, which there is no carpet in nature. Um, other than maybe moss, but you're not going to really do a whole lot of driving on that. Uh, it's not going to really affect your turn rate that much. And uh, I was kind of surprised by that. But anyway, uh, that's all I got for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, the next one is probably going to have to do with the brush motors that I got from Nick at Wolfram RC. I'm sorry, the brushless motors that I got from Nick at Wolfram RC. And I'm going to jump over probably to the Enduro 24 side. Um, I've got a setup for that that's going to be probably pretty awesome. And uh, we'll, we'll give you a link for that uh, for the motors, Nick. Appreciate that. But that's all I got for today. And um, we'll talk to you later.